Okay, so as promised, uh, a video on steroid health risks, more of a review. Um, so basically a overview of what we know so far. I'm going to break this down into areas. So today I'm going to look at blood and heart, and then we'll go on to various other aspects. Now, it's quite commonly known that steroids affect our lipids. They affect our cholesterol levels. They increase LDL. Uh, and they reduce HDL. Now, HDL is reduced um, mainly because of an increase in hepatic lipase, which is an enzyme, and this cannibalizes uh, HDL. So the higher levels you have of H, uh, HL, the less you're going to have a HDL. This has a knock-on effect to LDL. Lower HDL will increase LDL. HDL helps to manage LDL, but also... Because LDL is a raw material for the manufacture of hormones, we obviously no longer produce natural testosterone when we're using steroids, and as a result, the raw material is not used, and we end up with an excess. So this is the reason why LDL increases. And that's why we see a greater increase in LDL when we do a reduction in HDL. Now, this can lead to, lead to this Lipidemia, got it right. Basically, it's a fancy word for a high level of lipids and cholesterol in your bloodstream. This can result in a buildup on the arterial wall. So basically, the walls of your arteries and your veins end up getting built up and clogged up with fat. It's a simple way of putting it. This will cause cardiac ischemia. Ischemia, something like that, and like I say, I struggle with some of the pronunciations. In layman's terms, it means your heart doesn't get enough oxygen and blood, which can cause a heart attack. Um, so, there you go. Um, the other thing that can happen with this, the plaque uh, and the lipid deposits in the carbon arterial wall can break off, and then they can cause a blockage, again, with cardiac cardiac episode. Okay. Uh, if you want to have the technical term, it's a myocardial infarction. Basically, heart attack. It's just a fancy word for a heart attack. Now, the other effect on the heart is the cause of arrhythmias. There's two types. Well, there's two types. So there's several types, should I say. Uh, ventricle etopic beats. Ventricle tachycardia. Superventricle tachycardia and arterial fibrillation. Now we'll start in order of severity. So the mildest ventricle topic beats, heart goes out of rhythm. We get these, everybody gets these from time to time. Generally they'll sort themselves out. They can last for quite a period of time. Generally they cause no problems. However, if they continue, they can start to cause ventricle or superventricle. Now the only difference, between these two is super is lower heart and ventricle is upper heart. Both of these cause, um, to, to have this or to be classed as this, the heart must exceed 100 beats per minute and it is irregular. Now, again, generally, most people with these will be fine. They will calm down after a period of time. They can be triggered by various things. Um, one of the causes with um, the one of the problems should I say with these is that if these continue they can lead to arterial fibrillation which is a faster regular heartbeat but this one can lead to a cardiac episode so this one is potentially fatal um, generally these are caused through with users when they are in exercise now, a lot of these are caused by changes to the heart structure. Now, this is officially known as atomic anatomic remodeling. Uh, enlarged left ventricle for most people. Now, it is true that enlarged left ventricle occurs in trained athletes. But those that are using anabolic steroids, the changes are different and there is some damage to the ventricle which causes it to not work correctly leading to arrhythmias uh, but it also damages the myocardium or the heart wall it can cause scarring 
and a thickening of the heart wall which can result in a reduced flexibility um, so this is where it starts to stack up you see because if you start getting an enlarged left ventricle which starts to go to arrhythmia then you get a thickening of the myocardium or the heart wall and scarring of the heart wall creating it to be more sorry less flexible um, this can cause irregular heartbeats you got going into an arrhythmia the heart basically doesn't keep up it doesn't cope it stalls you have a cardiac episode you have a heart attack are these common not massively uh, but they do occur a little bit more regularly than they should the point is though we all all users have the groundwork for this starting with the dyslipidemia or the abnormal lipids the bad cholesterol management I've harped on about how cholesterol management is important for a very long period of time the problem is you see that, that the usage in our 20s and 30s can create problems in our 40s and 50s when we've long gone from using it would never link the two together because of the buildup of plaque on the arterial wall from mismanagement of lipids now other bits um, high blood pressure or technical term is hypertension certain drugs are notorious for increasing your blood pressure all steroids do it full stop and ment is particularly bad at it um, and one of the actions from this is an increase in red blood cell count our blood becomes thicker Excuse me. Now you can see how combine this with heart wall thickness and a plaque buildup, and we end up with an even bigger problem. We've got narrowed arteries, blood flow is restricted, and now we've got thick, gloopy blood that doesn't flow very well. Heart starts having to work hard to try and pump it around, but the wall's not very flexible and it's overly thick because it's scarred because we've got damage to the myocardium from steroid use. You can see where it all starts to stack. Uh, don't get me wrong, you know, what would we say? Um, our episodes in users is probably 5 maybe even 10%. So it's there, and it's enough to be of concern. Now, the other issue with bloods is obviously an increase in red blood cell count, and I'm not even going to attempt to say that one. I can't, I enter that of thytus or something. I cannot say it. I've tried and tried and tried. Uh, which is basically an increase in blood values, red blood cells, uh, thicker blood. But also thrombosis. Now, thrombosis is blood clotting. Now, one of the reasons this happens is because steroids cause hyperhomocysteinemia. <laughs> there you go. That's a long word. Basically, it's an increase in homocysteine in the bloodstream. Homocysteine increases blood clotting. It's as simple as that. Um, now, there is a second reaction here, particularly from oral steroids, because orals reduce prostolacin, which is a cl blood clot preventing lipid. Um, so we have an increase in homocysteine which causes blood clots and we have a reduction in prostacyclin prostacyclin thank you there we go sorry prostacyclin which is a fat that prevents blood clotting or reduces blood clotting so double issue um, and you can see how all these these things can stack up on one another so one thing we must ensure or we must keep an eye on is blood values and blood pressure very very important if you find rbc and blood values are getting high a quick fix is to donate blood we must also keep our cardiovascular ability up in order to help maintain a healthy heart and clear arterial pathways and we need to keep an eye on our lipids our cholesterol levels which is why gear and a shitty diet do not work. 
Okay, um, believe it or not, when I was at my mega doses, and even though I carried extra body fat, because my diet itself was low fat, my lipid values were always very, very good. Um, I used to have reduced HDL, but I never had high LDL because there was low fat content in my diet. And uh, that's how I managed it. So these are the things you need to watch for. Okay, you need to watch your BP, you need to watch your red blood cell count, you need to watch your cholesterol management, and you need to keep your heart healthy by keeping cardio in your regime. So there you go. There are obviously supplements, fish oils and such like that you can add in as well. But they're the basics. Okay, so to sum up, gear thickens your heart wall, it causes scarring, it enlarges the left ventricle, so does training, the gear will make it abnormally shaped too. This can causes problems with functionality, which can cause irregular and fast heartbeats. If they're left untreated, they can get so severe that they become into atrial fibrillation, which can lead and will lead to a heart attack. And then the only other thing is blood clotting due to an increase in um, cysteine, homocysteine, sorry, uh, and a decrease in a fat that regulates blood clotting, which is particularly prevalent with orals. So, hopefully that wasn't too confusing, and sorry about having to refer to notes, but I really do struggle with some of the, some of the words uh, pronunciation-wise. I have written them out sort of phonetically, but I still fuck myself up with them. Um, and um, hopefully that's something for you to, to look into when you're managing your cycles, when you're getting blood results done. These are the areas you want to be checking. So, I will do another one of these. And we'll go into other areas. I'm not going to go into brain chemistry because I'm already dealing with that sort of separately. Um, but we'll we'll dispel some myths about tendon integrity and those sort of things. Okay, so I'll catch you with another one shortly.